Thanks for watching this tutorial Azure AD with manual provisioning. Manual provisioning means um, you either create your users manually or have some other way how to get your users into the Atlassian application uh, outside of our plugin. One of the more common ways could be, for example, if you use um, LDAP synchronization to do that, or like I said, some other way by manually doing it, having some other synchronization method. So what we'll do is um, we'll configure our SAML single sign-on app on Jira. We'll start off there in our wizard. Um, then somewhere in the middle, we jump over to um, Azure AD and create an enterprise uh, app there to be able for Azure to uh, accept our SAML authentication requests. Then we go back to the um, Jira side, uh, finish um, the configuration and test it um, so that we can make sure it actually works. I'm logged into Jira as an admin. So I'm gonna go to administration, manage apps. And I've already installed our um, SAML single sign-on app. So on the left-hand side, you'll see two many items, SAML single sign-on and user sync. And the one we'll focus on in this tutorial is the um, SAML single sign-on one. So I'm gonna click SAML single sign-on. And here we go. When we enter our plugin for the first time, it will present us with this uh, welcome wizard. And what we wanna do is add a new identity provider. So I click the add new IDP button. And here I need to select the IDP type. That's gonna be Azure AD for our case. Give it a description. And here in the bottom, you actually see there's also the link to um, our documentation where you find the step-by-step -step guides um, that you may need. So I'm gonna go uh, click on next. And in this screen, the plugin shows us all the information that we need to configure the Azure AD side of things. And uh, it's important to note at the moment, it's all the same URLs because I've left all the default configuration of the plugin. I'm just gonna copy this. Have you changed anything in the service provider settings of the plugin? Um, then these URLs might be um, uh, slightly different. So there you need to watch out when to copy them uh, into the right fields in Azure AD. Like I said in this tutorial, it's easy because it's the default settings and they'll all be the same. So now I actually go over to Azure AD. Being logged in with my admin account, I go to enterprise applications now. Create a new application. and I need to search for resolution. And then I see uh, our predefined apps in the uh, application store already. And since we're configuring Jira here, I'm gonna select the SAML SSO for Jira. And I need to give it a um, sensible name that I can find it later again. So yeah, demo uh, Jira. And I say add. So this might take a couple of seconds now for this app to create. And here we are, it redirected us to the uh, configuration page of that app. So the first thing we have to do is go to single sign-on and select the single sign-on method. In our case, that will be SAML. So I click on SAML. And then you see a lot of things are already pre-configured um, by our template. There's only a few things we need to add. So I uh, click on the edit for basic SAML configuration. And here we need to paste the URL or replace this with the URL uh, we just copied. The same for reply URL. And the same with sign on URL. And then you can say save. Okay, we can close this. No, I'll test later. I'm gonna go a little bit down. Here is the app federation metadata URL. So I'm gonna copy that because we'll input that in our plugin later. And then there's only um, one more thing to do here, which is go to properties, scroll down to user assignment, uh, where it says yes, change that to no, and say save. That means everyone can use this integration. And that's it on uh, the Azure AD side already. Um, since we have it in the catalog, a lot of stuff is predefined. So um, I think that's a relatively easy setup. So I move over, oh, by the way, also to mention, um, since we're in the catalog, it also works with the free and the Office 365 free licenses. 
Uh, otherwise, you would need to have um, a um, premium account in Azure AD for those users. So I'm going to go back to our Jira plugin now. So I went back in our plugin now. So I go to next. And now I enter the uh, metadata URL that we have copied um, from Azure AD. Say import. And now you can see it successfully imported the metadata. So a lot of the data uh, from Azure has now been automatically imported without having to do that uh, manually for us. Go to next. In this screen, um, our plugin actually now wants to know if the username that's being sent from the identity provider, that's usually an attribute called name ID, if that matches the username in the um, Atlassian application. If those two matches, then you're fine and can uh, click on next. Um, if they don't match, then I'm just going to uncheck this quickly. You can then actually see um, that there's a lot more options for us to be able um, to modify the username, run it through regular expressions to drop domain names or do things with it, um, turn it to lowercase, or even look up um, the user via its email address and not the um, username. Those advanced functions are not part of this tutorial, so I'm not going to go into them further. Um, open a case with us or look at some other tutorials if you want to find out more about that, if um, that's your case. There's actually one more thing I want to show you um, in case you have the, um, uh, if you, in case you use LDAP synchronization from Active Directory uh, into your Atlassian application, then the usernames are not uh, typically not uh, based on the um, account name in Azure AD. Uh, they're called, uh, they are in the, uh, in your normal Active Directory account name. And if I go back to Azure just quickly and go back to, um, here on single sign-on to uh, user attributes and claims, then you have the name identifier value which you could modify. So if I click on that, you can see I can have other things as a um, source of the username. And if I then scroll down to on-premise account name, that is the um, attribute where Azure AD saves your Active Directory username when it's synchronized um, to an Active Directory. So if you have your um, Jira connected via um, LDAP uh, to Active Directory directly, uh, then using the on-premise account name um, as the username is probably what uh, makes the whole thing work out of the box, just to have mentioned that. So I'm going to go uh, leave that alone here, and I'm just going to go back into our plugin. And for now, let's assume the simple case that our username exactly matches um, what the identity provider sends us. So we don't have to do any changes here. I'm going to go on to next. Now it wants to um, know about the user update method. Since we said this is a uh, manual tutorial, so you either do that manually or have something like um, LDAP do that for you. Um, we don't have to do anything here. So we can click Save and Next. And that's it already. So everything should work now. So what the plugin suggests to us now is to uh, test the whole setup, uh, which we're going to do. So I'm going to click on Start Test here. And now the plugin creates what we call an authentication tracker. I'm going to copy this special URL. And an authentication tracker um, is something that we've invented that keeps everything around an authentication uh, together and live updates it as it happens. Um, so what I'm going to do with this special URL now is I'm going to go into an uh, incognito or private window um, and open that URL there so that I'm not authenticated against my Jira yet. Um, so I'll run through the uh, single sign-on process and um, afterwards I'll go back here and show you the results. So I'm going to go to my private browsing window, paste the URL, hit enter. And now you see I hit Jira quickly, got redirected to Azure AD. I now need to log in with the user. And the password, sign in. There we go, don't want to sign in. And now you see it locked me straight into uh, Jira. So if I go back to our plugin now, uh, you can actually see um, the whole thing was a success. 
And you see a lot more information about this particular authentication. The user ID that we have um, identified, the user is logged in, some uh, log and debug messages. And if I scroll down, um, this is the information that um, Azure has sent us in the SAML response. Um, if I go further down, you see the SAML message and the other and some more information about the request in total. So this thing is really useful for troubleshooting and testing like this. And as a small tip, if you hit the collect support info with this tracker button, then our plugin downloads um, this together with the plugins configuration without any private keys uh, as a JSON plop um, to your downloads folder. And if you then attach that to a support case with us, that gives us a lot of information um, in terms of the setup and the configuration of your plugin and what happened in this particular authentication tracker. So that's a great tool if you have any issues or any problems to be able to um, communicate with us very efficiently uh, to help you resolve it. But this has been a success. So we can click on next now. And this is the last screen that the uh, plugin presents us. So far, everything we have done has not interfered with any users logging in. We had this special URL to log in, get redirected and uh, test everything. The users still have seen their normal uh, username, password, login prompt. That's gonna change once I enable this enable SSO redirect. So you've got two options here. You could not enable it, say save and close, and then come back to your maintenance window and um, then enable it in, in the plugin settings. Um, or like we do here now, I'm going to enable it and I'm going to say save and close. And that means from now on, all my users get redirected to Azure AD for their authentication um, and everything um, should work fine. The only thing left for me is to say thanks for um, watching this tutorial. I'm Christian Reichert, c.reichert at resolution.de. Uh, um, I'd, I'd really love if you get in contact. Um, you see our support URL, resolution.de slash go slash support. You can also book uh, free screen share sessions. So if you want us to help you uh, along with the setup or you have a more complicated case and want to discuss it first, then absolutely feel free to go to resolution.de slash go slash Calendly. Um, and then we'll set up an hour with you where we can talk this through or guide you via screen share through that installation. That's one of our preferred methods because it's an easy way to to get a success uh, for you and get you the configuration that you like. Uh, also, feel free to visit our marketplace page, um, resolution.de slash go slash marketplace, where you find out um, more about the apps that we have, also all the other apps. So um, yeah, again, thanks for watching this. Uh, it's really been fun and I hope to see you again.